Yesterday, I took the bus to school. A choice purely motivated by the fact that it was raining outside, and I didn't want to get wet. And I didn't think about my decision again until I saw the bus rumbling down the road towards me, stopping in a cloud of dust. And I began to wonder whether my decision had been correct, ethically correct. Now, although public transport is normally viewed in a positive light, my decision had helped create more pressure on the bus companies to put more buses on the roads, and thus we are increasing the amount of pollution in our atmosphere, and ultimately speeding up the rate of global warming. I mean, none of these are ethically sound things, and given the same information before, almost certainly wouldn't have made the same decision. So, I stepped on the bus and pulled out my phone. And having already questioned the ethics of the bus, I decided it would only be fair if my phone received the same grilling. Phones are integral to our society today. They entertain, connect, and even frustrate us. And their integration to our society has grown so much that there's even been a psychological disorder named after the fear of being without one, nomophobia. And because these phones are so integral to our society, we often are on the lookout for the latest phone, the newest piece of technology. And as with making any decision, we often ask ourselves questions while we're doing this. And in this case, the questions might go something like this. How fast is it? Does it take good photos? Or can I shove it in my bag or even my pocket? And I mean, while these questions are all very good things to ask, I'm sure, I'd like to ask you, have you ever asked yourself, how ethical is this phone? Here are some statistics. 40% of your phone is comprised from metals. And these metals include gold, silver, and platinum. Gold is a finite material, and at the moment, it's still being extracted from less economically developed countries in Africa and South America, where at the moment there are still tens of thousands of child laborers working in mines today. But there's only 0.034 grams of gold in our phone. Surely this minute amount of gold doesn't make us responsible for a massive problem like child labor. But when you take into consideration the fact that we're endorsing companies that make, in one case, 45 and a half million of these phones in just three months, then you begin to realize that the amount of gold used and that we're endorsing adds up extremely quickly. For example, the company may use 1,547 kilograms of gold in just that time frame. In fact, the amount of gold used by the technology industry is so massive that it creates one-third of the entire global demand for gold. Yet, at the same time, these big technology industries are not doing enough to slow the amounts of child labor. And once again, like the rain, we have a problem. And once again, we also have a solution, thankfully. Smaller companies are beginning to offer more ethical alternatives to our phones. But at the moment, they're still not able to compete on features or price. So once again, we have a decision. Do we choose an ethically produced phone and a clear conscience? or a competitive price tag. But at the moment, the decision seems seemingly clear. The more ethical decision separated from the less ethical decision. But what if I told you that sometimes it could be more ethical to make the less ethical decision? Coming back to my commute, although me deciding to take the bus instead of the bike put more pollution to our atmosphere, I also put money into the local economy, improving the quality of lives of the drivers. Surely I could just as equally argue that it's an ethically sound thing to do. I did some research, and on average, we make more than 100 conscious decisions every day. In fact, we make more than 1,000 conscious decisions every day. An adult makes, on average, 35,000 conscious decisions every single day of the week. And these decisions give us a great power to do good or bad. And with that power, we also get the responsibility to make sure that we feel happy to stand by our decisions. So I'd like to challenge you to, in the next week, question at least one of the many thousands of decisions that you're going to make. And imagine a world where everybody knew why they took the bike or the bus, a world where we didn't blindly cause harm to others. Thank you.